Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. And I'm out on a woodland trail right now, out in a wildlife area, and I thought maybe what we'd do is discuss some proper winching techniques because I've got a nice big tree right in the middle of this trail that makes a perfect spot for me to set up to show you the techniques that you would use to winch from the front of your vehicle to pull your vehicle in different fashions or to attach to another vehicle and pull. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, there's lots of different recovery gear and we're gonna go over recovery gear. I'm also doing a display at Smoky Mountain Knife Works for their Dealer Days event coming up the, I believe it's the third weekend in October. It's like the 16th, 17th weekend in October. I'll be there with Corporal's Corner and Kevin Baxter, Salty Dog Outdoors. We're gonna do an overlanding and boondocking style display down by the river with our vehicles. We'll have recovery gear, we'll have you know camp gear, We'll have cook gear, all that stuff laid out, set up, and in use to kind of walk you guys through some seminars on this stuff. But for now, if you're on YouTube and you're enjoying this video, let's talk about a couple things that we need real quick to use our winch. Obviously, we need the winch. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. To go along with that, always a decent pair of gloves is a good idea. Even if you're using Dyneema winch rope, that stuff can burn your hands. And you're going to be fiddling around trees and things like that. It's always good to have gloves on to protect you from thorns, poison ivy, and the like. So gloves are your first thing that you need. Secondly, you need, if you're going to use vehicle to tree, you're going to need some type of a tree strap protector or tree trunk protector strap, excuse me. And that's just something you can wrap around the tree that's going to, number one, not abrade your line from wrapping it around the tree in noose fashion. So it won't abrade your line. It also won't abrade the bark really bad on the tree and damage the tree. And if we want to continue to use off-road trails, we have to take care of them the best we can. A tree trunk protector gives you lots of advantages when it comes to the environment, but also the safety of your recovery. So we're going to use that today as well. We're then going to use a pulley block, and this one is a Factor 55. Some of this kit I'm using today is from Factor 55. And this one has got rubberized teeth in it so that once you put your rope in there from your vehicle's winch it pretty much stays in there and doesn't pop out over the side like could possibly happen and because it's a smooth machined material it's also very non-abrasive and very slick as far as how it operates and reduces the abrading on the ropes and things that you're using it with unlike a metal snatch block which is really made for a steel winch cable these were designed specifically for Dyneema cable. So we're going to use this today. And then we've got a couple of what are called soft shackles. And soft shackles are kind of newer to the market. Generally speaking, everybody used in the past bow shackles and uh, the hooks with the flap on them and things like that. And these are all large pieces of metal that if they fail can fly through the air. So those are things you want to avoid. And then the last thing we're going to need if we're going to use a winch, to move a couple things out of my way here real quick. Got other soft shackles and things in this kit. We're going to want a dampener blanket, at least one if not two, depending on how we're setting up. So that even though Dyneema doesn't hold, doesn't trap force when it stretches, when it fails, it basically just falls to the ground. It doesn't snap backwards and pull everything with it. And that's been the problem with metal components for a long time is if you snap those components when you're doing your winching operation, you have a metal projectile coming back at you or at the vehicle. This dampening blanket avoids that completely by just dropping that rope and everything else to the ground if it fails. But with these Dyneema type shackles, soft shackles they're called, you don't need to worry too much about that, but we're gonna use the blankets as a safety measure anyway. So stay with me, we'll get a couple setups going here. All right, so we have a live oak here in the middle of the trail that we're going to use to pull against. This is probably, I don't know, 16 inches in diameter, something like that. A pretty good size tree. Not gonna go anywhere, it's good and alive, it's not dead. You wanna pay attention to all those things before you decide you're going to pull against that with a lot of force. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put a tree trunk protector strap on that. And you can see this is nice and wide got a cover on it so we're just going to go all the way around the tree with this just like this and pull it together with the two loops to the front 
we're then going to take our soft shackle and basically it just comes out of a knot just like that and when you pull it down it forces itself against that knot huge breaking strength in these things you don't have to worry about it so what you're going to do is you're going to take these two tails and you're going to run that soft shackle through your tails and then you're going to run that soft shackle through your block here to begin with just like this we'll come back in here in a minute we'll put our winch line on this but we want our knot off to one side just like this so that's our configuration before we put our winch line on this to winch our vehicle pretty simple all right the next step is to disengage our winch to pull rope out and we're going to go all the way up to where our line's at now your best option here if you have enough winch cable to go around and back to your vehicle that's going to give you twice as much mechanical advantage on this line than you would have normally so if you can pull enough winch cable out to get back to your vehicle that's what you want to do then you can utilize this block which I'll show you in a minute. All right, we're then going to come back here and use a solid recovery point on our vehicle. And we're going to feed through our winch eye and through this recovery point. Now the same thing plays here. We want this connection in the middle, not up here in the shackle, in the bow shackle, and not here on our winch connection either okay now we're ready to take up some slack but before we do that we need to put blankets on this winch line to dampen it if it were to fail put them on our lines all right at this point we've got two to one mechanical advantage on the vehicle ready to start the vehicle we always run the run the winch with the engine running because it does put a lot of drain on the battery now there could be times you don't have enough winch rope to go through and back to your vehicle you're a longer distance away if that's the case, you can hook it up one to one in very similar fashion. You're just going to take your soft shackle and you're going to go through the hook to your winch and then through both of these tree protector straps and you're not going to have the pulley involved. The only difference is now you've got a one to one ratio with your winch instead of the two to one that you had, but the setup is the same. Other than that, now you just winch as normal. Okay, a couple things real quick I want to talk about. We could do one more style of winching, and that is an offset winch. If we were trying to pull a vehicle up and we had the winch, and we were sitting off to the side, we could use this tree to create an angle and use that same pulley and go directly to whatever recovery point was on that vehicle and use our winch to pull through the pulley and straight across at an angle to pull that vehicle straight up the trail. And that's easy enough to do as well. But again, it's one to one at that point, not two to one. So that option is also there. Now, one thing I want to talk to you about these straps, we're going to talk more about snatch straps, toe straps, recovery straps, all that type of stuff here down the road but i want you to see this factor 55 tree strap has a diagram on it that's actually really really important and you can see it right here I'll hold it up to the camera for a few seconds so you can look at it and what that diagram is telling you is that if you have this tree in basket style in other words just wrapped around the tree with the two loops to the front exactly like what we did then you get the maximum tensile strength out of this strap, 
which is 18,600 pounds. If you use it in vertical fashion, or it's an extension of some sort, and you're pulling from loop to loop straight on, then you reduce that to about 9,300 pounds, or pretty much in half. The worst thing that you can do with one of these straps is to use it as a noose. In other words, put it around the tree, put one through the loop, and tighten this around the tree, pulling it like this in noose fashion. That is going to reduce the tensile strength of this down to 7,000 pounds, or basically a little over a third. So any strap is going to be that way. So if you're using recovery straps, you want to bear that in mind, that the best way to use them is doubled up like this around the object. The other option is straight if you need them for an extension, but you're going to cut that tensile strength pretty much in half. Now, if you've got a Jeep that doesn't weigh over 9,000 pounds, you're probably okay. But if you choose to put that thing, because you have no choice, and it does happen, in noose fashion around something, bear in mind that you have greatly reduced the pulling tensile strength or the, the ability for the strap to hold the weight that you're trying to pull. If your Jeep weighs over 7,000 pounds, you may want to rethink that and find a different option. All right, guys, well, just remember that recovery is a very important part of your off-roading kit. And we're going to do a video again here shortly about the minimum things that you should have and maybe ways that you can manipulate those minimums if you don't have exactly what you should have on your vehicle. Because there are certain things you should really have on your vehicle as well, depending on whether you're off-roading by yourself, with your family, or with friends. Guys, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for my school, for my family, for my business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.